I play D&D, you probably play D&D, let's face it, it's become mainstream. That being said, most people aren't totally aware of the older books that have inspired the game. Now one of these works that the Zoomers haven't found yet is Jack Vance's The Dying Earth. Now when I first opened the D&D Player's Handbook, which was actually a pirated 3.5 PDF at the time, uh, I was confused by how the magic worked. I, like many other people, was used to how uh, magic or mana points worked in video games, where you have a pool of magic, energy, whatever, and you can draw on that to fuel your spells. The way D&D magic works is different. Instead of having magicka focus mana, your blue bar under your health, you have spell slots, which you fill with spells that you prepare at the beginning of the day. So this preparing spells adds another level of strategy to the game. Magic user can't rush in with their full salvo at their disposal. They need to prepare five casts of fireball before spamming them. Now the weirdest thing about D&D magic, at least to me, was that the caster forgets the method of casting the spell after casting it. So after I blast them with fireball, I can't just blast them again. The method of evoking such fiery destruction has left my brain. It's kind of like the stuff you learned in high school, right after the final, poof, gone. So 10 year old me, realizing that the magic didn't work like it did in Aragon or Harry Potter, decided to make a human fighter instead. Old character concept, I know. Now, Jack Vance's The Dying Earth has been on my radar for quite a while now. I knew it inspired D&D magic, and I also knew that Vecna, as in the one-eyed and one-handed lich, his name was actually an anagram of Vance's last name. Well, the uh, time finally came, and I have to say, it was fire. Okay, quick side tangent. Out of all the epic imagery in this book, the cover designer settled for this goofy thing. Hail there, fair maiden. Would you accompany me on a romantic perusal of the countryside? Nay, I already have a boyfriend. Well, you look like the sort of girl that could use two boyfriends. The dying earth takes place so far in the future that the earth is essentially unrecognizable. All of mankind's scientific progress has been forgotten, save for a few weird machines here and there, and the dying sun hangs as a red disc in the sky. An age of sorcery has also come and gone as well, as the uh, Lord Dump in the book states, At one time, a thousand or more runes, spells, incantations, curses, and sorceries had been known. The reach of Grand Mathalam swarmed with sorcerers of every description, of whom the chief was the arch-necromancer Fandal. A hundred spells Fandal personally had formulated, the rumor said, that demons whispered at his ear when he wrought magic. Pontilica the Pious, then ruler of Grand Mathalam, put Fandal to torment, and after a terrible night, he killed Fandal and outlawed sorcery throughout the land. The wizards of Grand Mathalam fled like beetles under a strong light. The lore was dispersed and forgotten, until now, at this dim time, with the sun dark, wilderness obscuring Ascalais, and the white city of Cain half in ruins. Only a few more than a hundred spells remained to the knowledge of man. Like I said, this book is fire. Now that you have a sense of the setting, let's dive into the real thick of things, the magic system itself. There is, quote, a great underlying mosaic of magic. Think of this as a tangential aspect of reality that can be invoked only under certain circumstances. Now, some mortals have been able to glimpse at certain sections of this mosaic, and these very specific sections became what are spells. Now, if one were able to see the entirety of the mosaic, they would be all-powerful. Now, since they're based on a single aspect of the mosaic of magic, spells in the Dying Earth, and by extension Dungeons and Dragons, have very specific effects. Every time I cast Fireball, there will be a ball of fire. Now, there also might be some angry party members, depending on who you catch in the splash damage, but that's beside the point. Now, why do magic users forget their spells upon casting? In short, spells aren't just hand motions or weird pronunciations. They're truly potent pieces of knowledge. In a spell book, the runes burn with a strange energy. And it's not just the weird ink they're printed with. Instead, it's the alien knowledge no mortal was meant to possess. Now, these spells are so complex that, in a way, they become entities. And holding them in your head is difficult. Now, the stronger your intellect, the more of these you can hold in your head at any given time. 
And when you cast a spell, you're not just invoking this force of nature, you're unleashing an entity of eldritch knowledge. That's why after firing a spell, you forget it. Now why I love the Vancian magic system so much is because while it's technically a hard magic system, it keeps the mysticism and uncertainty of a soft one. Hard magic is the sort that has clear and defined rules, and it's really in vogue nowadays. Think anything by Brandon Sanderson. Now soft magic, on the other hand, is less defined. It doesn't have actual rules. Now, on one hand, I like it because it seems more mystical, but at the same time, it's easy to just want to magic away plot problems. But when it's done right, soft magic really evokes a sense of wonder and uncertainty. Since you don't know how it works, it seems more magical. The reason Vancian magic feels soft when it's hard is that while the effects of spells are certain, that which fuels them is never fully explained. Not even the wisest of wizards really know what's going on. Save for those who glimpse beyond this reality and gaze upon the arcane laws that mortals were never meant to fully comprehend. So you can see why Vancian magic was used when creating Dungeons and Dragons. The whole spells have one effect thing is really straightforward to write rules for, and the whole prep, fire, and forget thing also has a natural check and balance to wizards. At the same time, you keep that unknowable power of magic by never exactly explaining how it works. If you think I got anything wrong here, let me know how wrong I am in the comments below. Also be sure to check out The Dying Earth by Jack Vance. The setting alone carries what is a series of short, episodic stories. Highly recommend. And if you wanted anything else to add to your reading list, check out my own book, The Wizard Slayer. Uh, it's been inspired by Robert E. Howard's works, as well as Berserk, and allegedly as Heavy Metal Vibes. This is uh, available on Amazon in both uh, paperback and Kindle, and in a couple weeks here, hopefully, uh, I'll have the second book in this series out as well, along with the audiobook of this one. Links to all that jazz down in the description. Hopefully you found this informative, or at the very least, entertaining. Now, you know the drill. Smash that like button, subscribe if you don't think I'm too insufferable, and take care. Away with you, vile beggar!